So I've been all over Reddit and every other web page trying to figure out how to hook up an Ecobee to a White Rogers thermostat, considering I don't have a common wire and I'm not going all the way downstairs to run wiring from my furnace, which is just going to cause a whole bunch of problems. So here's my solution, and surprisingly, I'm, this will work very well. Pick this up on Amazon for 24 bucks, I believe. I'll link it in the description below. It may have even been cheaper. A um, couple, you know, metal box and a faceplate, two wire thermostat wire, nothing too crazy. A little guy so that your wire doesn't get cold up there in the attic, and some wire nuts. Uh, none of this is too hard. The cool thing is, is this has one of those awesome little spin-on things. You do need to mount this to a metal box, so don't uh, don't assume that you can, you know, just screw this thing in and everything will be okay. So you definitely want to run a metal box if you're not comfortable with electrical. Definitely get an electrician. But I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this. Hopefully, as as good as I possibly can, even though this isn't probably the best option and it's probably not the right option, but it's an option that works. And if you guys want to try, go for it. So the first thing you guys should be doing is figuring out where you want to mount your box. I've already figured that out, but I'm not going into the attic just yet. Uh, I've been up there most of the morning and I'm not really having fun. So I'm going to go ahead and prep this thing. You're going to want to use these knockouts. That's really loud on camera. Maybe I'll knock that off and then bust it out. I'm doing it left-handed so it doesn't work, but I'm going to bust this one out and one over here, most likely on the left side. And that way I can install that guy there. And I'm gonna put this guy right up to the top of there. So I'll come back with you here in just a second as I knock everything over. All right, I knocked out my two little plugs. I decided to go with the most bottom, bottom most hole. And of course, top center for this. Um, pretty simple, spin this little collar off. Attempt to feed wires left-handed into the hole. That goes in there just like so, and then of course you're going to screw on that bottom nut. Same thing with this guy, we're going to feed that in, get that prepared, and we'll go ahead and do the electrical here in a second. Alright, so now our box is prepped, we've got our electrical ready to go. Of course we've got our two wire. Bring all of this awesomeness up to the attic and play with that while we're up there and I'll kind of walk you through all the steps. I'm going to try to wire it out of the attic as much as possible so you guys can see how this is done. At some point in time I'm going to have to go up there and I'm going to apologize for the lighting because it's an attic and it's dark. All right now for the wiring. Of course we've got our, well it's hanging from, but uh, that way it doesn't pull out which is that little clamp. White to white, green to ground, black to black. I typically ground these boxes, but since this is a 24 volt transformer, it's in the attic, nobody's gonna touch it, not a big deal. And one last thing is red to R and white to C. I always like to leave a little squiggle, and that way if this thing gets pulled, there's plenty of wire in there, and it doesn't tear all this, because this can be a real pain in the butt to go back and fix for, or even just diagnose if it gets torn. So I'm gonna close this up, and we'll get up in the attic and uh, get to deal with the lower light up there. All right, so we're in the attic. It is hot. I've got my transformer and box wired up. I need to put one staple right there to hold this all in place. But my wire comes up, runs through this uh, anti-tug deal here, and I've got it wired as usual. <clears throat> we're just red to red, white to white, yellow to yellow, and green to green. The only difference is the power wire that comes from this transformer now runs up and actually twist in with the red wire that usually connects to this that goes to your thermostat. The other thing that I'm, I'm doing is I've taken the common wire, which will be the return to source, per se, uh, off of that transformer, and I've wired it to the blue wire. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little bit of insulation inhaled, no big deal. Uh, and that will take the power, uh, I'm sorry, that will return the power back to source. So. Um, let's go ahead and go back downstairs uh, and I will show you kind of the misconceptions and problems that I was running into, especially with the stuff I've been reading on Reddit. So let me close all this up and I'll walk you through all that. All right, the box is all closed up. Cable poles are tight there. I'll get the actual word for those when I actually remember it. I'm not sweating my butt off. Again, transformer's hooked up. I'm going to get out of the hot attic and we'll show you what we did downstairs. All right, so here's my Ecobee hookup and typically this red wire doesn't twist in the attic in the White Rogers box. Typically it just, just goes to red. 
And of course there's no common wire, which is now my blue that's twisted to the white wire. And a lot of times what people are saying is if you've got a power source, it has to go to RC. So typically, like I had on my old thermostat, you wanna run that to the red wire to RH. The problem with that is even though this does bridge, you can't bridge directly across here. It bridges inside of the thermostat itself. So what we need here is we need power and a sensing wire. And what the power does is power across the RC terminal to the C terminal, basically being your positive and your negative or positive and return to source, which is a lot like a battery or anything else. You have to go back to its original, original source, more or less power and ground. And these two wires are literally just powering the, uh, the thermostat itself. So nothing too crazy about that. It's just what turns on the actual power and allows it to work. Now, the thing is, is you also need an RC wire. A green, I believe, is your fan, uh, or maybe that's a pump. I, I've forgotten. It's been a while since I installed this. Uh, Y1, I believe, maybe that's called a pump, and Y2 is going to be your high speed. And if I remember correctly, it's green and yellow, and if they're wired together with the power coming through the RC, we'll turn on your high. Otherwise, it'll be the RC in green, which will just be low, and Y is called to the uh, to the evaporative cooler's pump. But I could have all that wrong, and you can berate me about that in the comments. Anyway, I'm going to be as quick about this as possible. <clears throat> power now comes through here. It is a sensing wire and power. The White Rogers doesn't send power down this thing. Um, I've, I've tested it over and over again, and statically, this thing has absolutely nothing coming into it. So we've now energized it by twisting the two wires upstairs and we're just going to plug that into RC and we're going to plug this into common and we'll see if this thing all powers up. Okay guys, one handed moment of truth here. Oh, look at that. We've got power. So like I said, nothing too crazy about this. It's actually pretty simple. It looks like it was never a problem at all. So I'll get this thing mounted. Um, we'll wait about five minutes or so make sure everything's running properly. Um, I'm sure this thing's gonna have to go through an initialization sequence, and then we'll get this thing mounted. I actually probably won't mount it yet, but uh, we're doing a class five finish on all the walls, so they're buttery smooth, but I've still got a couple coats and some paint to put on. But you can see it's running, so that's awesome. Um, we'll do the satisfying peel probably someday. I really wanna pull it now, but we'll wait for that. And then uh, once this thing powers up, I'll let you guys know. If uh, the evap controller, or is, I should say the Ecobee, is now controlling the evaporative cooler. Alright, so it's just going to do a calibration, and I don't know if you guys saw that, it just stopped. Things set at 68, it's on the Eco Plus. Um, I'm going to give this a minute or so and see if it fires up. Um, I would use my app, but unfortunately uh, my app is being used by the phone. So... Everything is running good on it though. I uh, don't see any problems, haven't heard anything weird from upstairs. It does say that the fan is running now. Remember that this Roger White takes about a minute or two before it actually starts blowing out air. If you're wondering what I did here, I had this problem where all of my air, because of the direction of this flow, literally just went all down the stairs. So as you can tell, we're in the middle of a remodel and redoing everything. So what I did was I actually put a splitter. Oh look, it just came on. All right, guys, so it works. It works awesome. That's cool. Uh, anyway, the splitter brings the air down and over and actually cools down the upstairs now. But as you can tell, it's running. Everything's awesome. The uh, Ecobee is powered up, and if I wanted to stop it, we'll just raise the temperature here real quick above what it's currently at. Not sure what that was, I didn't actually read it. Saving peak hours. I did already set this up downstairs, FYI. And you can see the thing just shut off. I am now just on a fan mode. So make sure it shuts off. Give that a minute again. <clears throat> Like I said, guys, the only thing that we did here was add a basically a positive and a negative. Again, you can wire it up right behind your thermostat. Doesn't matter where you put it, 
or I, like I said, I put mine in my box for a cleaner install. That way when you pull wires through here, it just looks like a thermostat. You know, there's no more headaches that need to be done. There we go, it just shut off. So one more time, I'm gonna kick it on. It's just 65 is fine. Not that I ever want it that cold. It's actually a cool day. I'm glad the attic's not unbelievably hot today. The last few times I've been up there, it's been horrible. <laughs> downstairs so quick easy flip just needed power to get to it oh look at that all right guys if you have any questions on this let me know i can try to explain it as best possible but like i said don't worry so much about this side it really is just about this these diodes were the thing that were kind of blowing my mind is that there's literally no power getting to this r terminal and it doesn't technically need it the cool thing is is it needs the power you know for an eco b if this was just a general thermostat which i think my wife moved um you know it's it's cool this this connector is made by something like a bimetallic strip it doesn't need to be anything amazing you know these two connect and it's ready to go um, <clears throat> it doesn't technically need a common wire. Any of these can run this circuit. I mean, if you were to twist, you know, these together, they'll run. So this isn't necessary. If you needed a common wire, this is an easy, simple solution to do so. Cool thing about this is it's not going to fry it. You've got power running across here. This is a good consumer. And then the next thing is these are diodes. So it's not like the power can backfeed into this system. You've already got a continuous power through this entire thing. I mean, the, the whole relay is being pulled. Click closes makes contact and then the power comes through this thing and is running up through these diodes into the center power here and runs down through these wires depending on what leg you're looking on you know if you just run to the pump if you're running you know your high low etc etc and the thing is is if you apply power here it just goes through this way it's never gonna back out this way and double power this thing and go some weird voltage or something this is actually a really smart design i'm surprised it's odd they don't give you an option for a, uh, a 24 volt power supply or or even just a common wire assembly in, in general. I mean, it would be just as simple to hook up something in, you know, let's say this general area that's already pre-wired up here and all you have to do is take your fifth wire down and hook it to your common. Uh, anyway, this is how I did it. Like I said, you can berate me in the comments, but as you can tell, it's working. I can shut it off because I'm freezing. Um, I should say freezing, it's just cold in general. Um, but it works and I like things that work and when things work it makes my life easier and it means I don't have to be here to mess with and just like that it's off I don't have to be here to mess with it when I put it on the schedule so let me know what you guys think um, I hope this helps I don't mean to berate reddit and every other place that's out there but I have read a lot of stuff even from HVAC guys and I've thought about this myself for quite some time. I even thought about running off the uh, the transformer that's down in my basement. But, you know, double power coming from random sources or even the doorbell transformer, you know, it, it's better just to have something dedicated. So this is an easy way for me to do this. It works. Like I said, you're not going to get any double up power thanks to these diodes that were in here. And you do have your common wire again because it's returning to source and source is power here. This is powered by 110. You could even technically plug it into your unit here but i i wouldn't suggest this. this is a plastic box and these are always designed to go into a metal box for grounding purposes so hope you guys are having a good day i'm gonna go back to doing drywall and crap but you know this thing showed up and i wanted to get it taken care of because it's literally been bugging the crap out of me to see if it'll work so she's off and uh i'm gonna go back to uh getting things done but as you can see like i said we've got power and everything's working great so hope you guys are Hope this helped. I have no idea. Anyway, signing off.